Good morning. My name is Wanda Parker. I'm a wife, a student, and a working mom of three from Greenville, Mississippi. Uh, when my kids go to school, I was used to going on with my day, feeling, knowing that my kids were being safe in a positive, safe environment where they were learning and were nourished and treated with respect. But very recently, this all came to an end when I received a call in the middle of the day and was told that I had to come and pick up my son, James Parker because he was on school grounds in possession of what the school believed to be a cell phone. Despite my son's testimony that what he had was not a cell phone, but in fact was an iPod, which actually belonged to another classmate, the school administration refused to believe him and sent him home, demanding that he give up the alleged cell phone to be kept by the school until the end of the year as punishment. In other words, my son was being sent home until he was able to provide this cell phone to the administrators. And I'm thinking to myself, is this really happening? When my son James Parker came home, my husband and I, having no idea what cell phone the school was referring to, thought we could just put this problem behind us by simply giving the school an older, out of use cell phone from our home. And so we did. But then the response from the school was to refuse the cell phone and demand a working activated one. Otherwise, my son could not return to his school. Once again, I asked myself, is this really happening? Is the school really willing to deny my son's right to attend his school and receive an education because of the school's district cell phone policy? What about my son's word that he does not own a cell phone? What about my word as a parent? None of this was enough for the school administration. They refused to listen and instead decided to deny my son his right to an education. After giving up hope on the school, I was fortunate to be introduced to Ms. Joyce Parker, a parent advocate for the Citizens for a Better Greenville, a local community organization that has been working years to end the school to jailhouse track and making sure that our youth have equal access to a quality education and are treated with dignity and respect. Ms. Parker helped me reach out to the necessary agencies that could help my son, including Ms. Shanda Roby, a former employee of the Mississippi Center for Justice and the Mississippi State Department of Education. <clears throat> Despite the calls from the state, state Department, the school administration still refused to listen to my son and me. Instead, they placed him in an alternative school setting for 45 days for insubordination. Because of the school's inflexible zero tolerance policy regarding cell phones, my son was shamed and, and deprived of his education. He was pushed out of normal classroom setting, left behind, and lost over seven weeks of class time. As parents, we send our children off to school because we trust the teachers and administrators. We think of our children's school as their, way, as their home away from home. What this experience with my son has taught me is that these zero tolerance disciplinary policies are not fair and they only violate our children's rights and dignities. But they also dehumanize the schools, making them feel more like a prison and less like a second home. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope this new study and its findings serve as a cornerstone for new approach to discipline in our schools, where schools can once again be a place where our kids feel welcome and safe where they can focus on learning while also being treated with dignity and respect, where their minds and words are valued as well. As parents, students, and teachers, and community members across the country take part in this week's Dignity in School campaign, National Week of Action on School Push Out, <coughs> which is this is the vision that we're, that we're fighting for. Thank you. I'm Jamila Day, Voice of Russia. Um, I, would, I wish to direct my question to you two, parent and student here. Um, uh, and, and you provided me the perfect segue of school culture, but when students see uh, their friends being denied an education, they themselves are, are being uh, disproportionately punished for infractions, and that then in turn affects the, uh, affects the parent um, in the relationship that you see when you cannot simply go to your administrators and say, look, I vouch for my kid, it didn't happen. Um, what kinds of things can students who are in the situation and the parents start to do, start to be thinking about, to help work within the framework to, number one, not have such harsh punishments, but also help us reporters 
know to take a look at something that may be happening. Okay, as a parent, the only thing that I can think of is that by if the school system allows the parents to have their uh, voice in the school system, being able to come together as a group to work together, not work against each other, then we can create a better environment for the kids instead of pushing them out um, uh, and at the same time pushing the parents out. Because when you push the kids out, you're pushing the parents out as well.